it's the next level. What do you say to silver dollar pancakes, crispy hash browns, bacon, eggs, freshly squeezed orange juice, and black coffee? I say, oh, I don't eat food. Well, that explains the empty refrigerator. Wanda, hmm. is there something special about today? Well, I know the apron is a bit much, dear, but I am doing my best to blend in. No, no, there on the calendar, someone's drawn a little heart right above today's date. Oh, yes, the heart. Hmm. Well, don't tell me you have forgotten, Viz. Forgotten? A wonder I'm incapable of forgetfulness. I remember everything. That's not an exaggeration. Welcome back to the show, panelers. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this week, well, we're going to be, this is going to be a spoiler full podcast of season one of the first two episodes of WandaVision that just released on Disney Plus. Sorry if this, if this was just a little uh, too soon to post, uh, kind of rushed up on you, but we're going to cover it. And if you have any feedback at the very end, we'll, we'll tell you to get in touch with us for feedback for the future episodes for episode three. We're going to do those individually. And we're going to go from there, especially when Snowpiercer comes out. Yeah. So, well, with WandaVision uh, Season 1, Episode 1, there wasn't a title. I looked actually on Disney+, Plus and I could not find any title for any of these two episodes. So the synopsis of the first episode is Wanda and Vision struggle to conceal their powers during dinner with Vision's boss and his wife. Wanda and Vision struggle to conceal their powers during dinner with Vision's boss and his wife, which... Why did that go up it. there twice? I, I don't know why. I don't, maybe we both we might have both put it because when I saw it, it was blank, and so I put it in there, and then oh, we, okay. you, we may have put it in there at the same time or something. That may be why it got in there twice. Well, they they do say under redundant in the dictionary, <laughs> see redundant. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we're just gonna go over our overall thoughts, and then we'll go into you know uh, top fives of the highlights of that particular episode, and then we're gonna move into episode two but it, it's pretty funny how you i'm probably gonna like talk about some of episode two so my suggestion to the listeners if you haven't watched it obviously go back watch it come back <laughs> those two episodes are up and you could easily uh catch up with what we're saying here so steve why don't you take us out with uh your first overall thought well you know i overall i, I really really enjoyed the, the the first you know both the episodes together we'll, we'll talk about episode two in a minute but mainly I, the only thing that kind of bothered me a little bit uh about episode one is you really there's no way you can go into this completely cold because i think if, if somebody has like no working knowledge at all of the MCU, mm -hmm. they're going to totally be confused. They're not going to know who these characters are. They're not going to know why they're in this situation. And, and so that's, it, it kind of bothered me a little bit that they didn't give some kind of like recap at the beginning or kind of catch some people up just in case you have a few people who, who were just wanting to check. I mean, I don't know why anybody would, obviously, you know, you, you, I can't see why you would watch the show if you don't have some sort of knowledge of the MCU. So I guess that's kind of why they were thinking along that lines. Um, but I do like that they're kind of slowly doling out the mystery and the mystery to us. And I was listening to TV podcast industries. They said it really had an, I love Lucy kind of vibe. Mm. I, I had more of a, I got more of a bewitched kind of vibe from it because bewitched kind of stemmed both the, black and white and color i guess i love lucy kind of did the same thing it stemmed both black and white and a little bit of color maybe i don't remember my mom watched i love lucy so i don't i, I used to watch those as a kid when they had reruns on mm -hmm. in their like late 70s early 80s yeah. and they yeah. would have them in the afternoon or something yeah like i said i think bewitched i think both of them stemmed you know over the course of from black and white to color so yes it, it actually the first season i believe was in black and white and then they went into color after that. Right, right. But, yeah, overall, I thought the first two episodes were really interesting. You know, I thought it had that takeoff of the late 50s to early 60s sitcoms, but I was thinking more like Leave it to Beaver and Dick Van Dyke show, mm -hmm. especially with certain antics of, like, when 
he's carrying her through the door and he phases through the door, but she falls down. <laughs> right. Cause she doesn't phase. He phases and he does. <laughs> yeah. But then she ma- force phases him to go through the, the chair to put her in it. And yeah. Yeah. And it was really cool to have those elements in there. And definitely like you were saying, they were pulling from Bewitch because that second episode, that whole introduction was pretty much, a almost a similar shot for shot for, the bewitched opening credits in the very beginning and oh yeah yeah with them flying over the the moon together and yeah oh yeah for sure yeah and i i thought the it was very comedic and the timing was great with the lines i loved how they incorporated the vision and wanda's abilities within each episode how they're trying to look normal within a town but we do get a little foreshadowing once the dinner of the boss actually happens and you could tell that this is leading to something more, a little bit more dark. I think the comedy is there to be a buffer as the show progresses, and then eventually we're going to start to see what's going to happen. Because this is supposed to lead us into Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. So this is preparing us for that movie and what is to happen within that. And I just loved Elizabeth Olsen, Paul Bettany, Catherine Hahn in, in these episodes so far. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. So with that, we're going to move into our uh, top fives for the highlights of the first episode. Like I said, something I might say could leak into the second, but I'm not sure. Yeah, no, that's fine. Vision resident. Wanda, darling. Vision, sweetheart. Listen, about tonight. Don't worry, dear. I have everything under control. Oh, well, that is a relief. I must confess, I'm really rather nervous. Nervous? Whatever for? Well, you know, darling, I still get a little tongue-tied. <laughs> Fizz? After all this time? There's an awful lot riding on this one, Wanda. If tonight doesn't go just so, I think this could be the end. Well, it's just one night. There's no need to get dramatic. Look, I think the best course of action is to impress the wife. And I think the best course of action is to impress the husband. (laughs) Wonderful. Glad to know we're both on the same page. Until tonight, then, my darling. Until tonight. So I'll start off with mine. The my number five would be the the humor of it all of Wanda and Vision in this world. I, I like I, like I stated before, this is a comedic take on the Bewitched TV series for the first two. I think for the most part, Agnes Harkness or or Agnes as they are, they don't say because it's Agatha Harkness in the comic. But being in the role within these two episodes propels because she's the nosy neighbor. But mm-hmm. you know, since she's always there, something's up. Yeah. Yeah, I loved all the – I'm right there with you. My number five is the the comedy, the comedic elements, and just all the, the classic kind of misunderstandings that we have. And I'll talk some more about them as we go, as we go through. But uh, just the, those classic kind of 50s sitcom tropes that you, you always had, if you remember watching, uh, even Leave it to Beaver and, and I Love Lucy and all those Bewitched and all those different shows, they all had – different little you know comic misunderstanding things that would would come on through and uh would would it makes it funny and and it didn't bother me it didn't creep me out at all because i'm so used to having watched those it was actually kind of refreshing to see that again because you know nowadays tv feels like it has to be very cerebral and and some of even the comedy sometimes seems like it's, it's over the top trying to be intellectual and and not do some of those tropes mm. Well, my number four would be the comedic cues with Paul Bettany and Elizabeth Olsen. I just thought they were really cool and great. I love the little quick quips. The fact that, you know, he, he Vision gets pointed out. It's like, oh, you, what are you, a robot? <laughs> no, I'm a carbon-based human. <laughs> yeah. He states to his, <laughs> to his colleague, which is so funny because he's able to do things so fast. You see the speed in his hands starring it. And... You know, and there's a lot of adult themes in this episode, too. It, it shows Wanda has some sort of control within this world to some degree. She, uh, I have more thoughts on this later because as we get into episode two, I'll, I'll have more. Where- yeah, I think episode two gives us a lot more of how this reality is kind of working and, and what's going on, or gives us definitely brings us some more questions. So when we get to episode two, I'm sure we'll talk a lot about those kind of things. Yeah. 
And you're number four. Uh, it's just it was the 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 vision and not knowing what his company actually does and nobody really being able to and like you said the whole comedic thing even his boss can't really explain what they actually do like he asked his coworker well do we produce anything yeah we produce these forms and he's like well what are <laughs> what are these forms well it's the data on the forms but what what do we do and then he asked the boss and the boss is the same thing as we you know we 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 develop these forms and it's like you know our productivity has increased three hundred percent since you got here but we don't know what we produce so it was uh, it was really good and it's it's one of those things that that it's it wasn't uncommon for some of those old sitcoms to have you know the dad go to a job that he never talks about what he actually does you just see him wearing a suit and a hat every day and then he comes back and nobody ever really asks what he does or occasionally we might see him in the office and he's just sitting there like vision was in there you know typing out numbers and, and producing papers and putting them on a stack and then have this whole big stack put on the other guy's desk and <laughs> he's doing a stack of papers. And it just, it, it's a, it was hilarious to me, even though, uh, like I said, it's, it's very classic, but uh, it was, it was really, really hilarious. And it's just, it's interesting. His, his reactions to things almost seem like he's not really there that he's more playing off from what Elizabeth Olsen is doing or what Wanda is doing that he's like, it's like, it, I don't know how to explain what I'm thinking about his character in the way both these kind of episodes is he's, he's kind of just, I mean, I love what he's doing with it. Don't get me wrong. I, and I yeah. love how the writers are handling it, but it, it's, there's almost a few times when you almost seem like he's not an independent person. No, you know? And, and so I, it's, every other character or at least like Wanda seems to be independent of what's going on around her, even though she's reacting to it, but he doesn't seem really to be independent. Like at the end of the episode, when the boss is choking, he doesn't do anything until Wanda tells him. Yes. Um, and that's where really kind of clued me in of what, what are they doing with this character? Cause we do know that in the, you know, the prime MCU, at least his character was killed. And so we don't know what this version of him is. I think this is her version of him in the most idealistic life of being in a, as a couple mm -hmm. before he had passed away. It was a way for her to keep his memory alive or keep him alive in her own thoughts. Maybe. Yeah. But I'm curious as to where she is and why she is, which leads me into it's like, I'm not sure what is really keeping her to some sort of reality, this reality, is it a hospital that she's in? Mm -hmm. Because we heard some noises from the the radio and stuff like that. Like we, we hear it in episode two, but not really much in this one. Like people are calling out to her or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a lot, a lot. Of, we get a lot more of that in episode two. Yeah. And then the cool part, you know, that I liked was the Stark toaster, you know, the <laughs> Stark Industries toast me 2000. And it's cool. It's like, all right, well, we got a bit of Tony Stark in here. But it's funny how the toaster oven looks like it's a face to some degree. And it's got that little flashing red dot. Now, I don't know if that's a tribute to them showing something of the like the real world within this mm -hmm. fantasy world that she's created or that she was pushed into. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And that, that toaster, that, that toaster commercial, there, there was a few kind of double entendre kind of things said in there that I kind yep. of went, Ooh, is that meant to be a little more risque than, uh, than what Disney would usually, you know, put yeah, out they, there's, they're, they're pushing you know, the envelope. You know, you got to please your man and stuff like that. Yes. And uh, um, I was like, Ooh, wait a minute now. Um, but uh, there were some symbols on that, that toaster that, uh, th that I, I didn't recognize. And I think uh, you, uh, you might recognize some of them for some mm -hmm. of the logos and things that are on it. And just the fact that we got Stark Industries and it's, it's, it, again, it's interesting. And, and I think I caught this from uh, reading some of the trivia about it. But when you think about the two, the two commercials in both episodes, the first commercial is a Stark commercial. And where did vision come from? Vision came from Stark Industries. And mm. the second commercial being a Von Strucker watch and Von Strucker. I mean, you just watched Age of Ultron, right? And mm -hmm. wasn't Von Strucker the name of the guy that gave Wanda her powers? Wasn't that? That was, yeah, it was the yeah. syndicate or he was in charge mm -hmm. of that version of, what was it, Hydra? 
Yeah, it was yeah. a Hydra thing. I think I, I didn't rewatch Age of Ultron, but I just was reading some of the trivia about it, and they were talking about who Von Strucker was. So I thought that was that was really kind of interesting there. Yeah. Um. So is that bring us to my number three? Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, just that that quick phone conversation between Vision and Wanda when once he realizes what the actual date is, and so he knows the truth. He knows that it's his boss coming over for dinner, but Wanda thinks it's their sexy anniversary or that she's yes. gonna do this sexy kind of anniversary. <laughs> and they never get around to he never gets around to actually telling her because he thinks she figured it out as well. Which I don't know how would she have figured it out from just a heart on the on the the calendar. But anyway, that's that goes back to that idea of he's not like I don't think he's an independent character at this point because he's no. just reacting to what she's saying instead of stopping her and just flat out telling her, hey, my boss is coming for dinner. He just assumes that she knows that she's correct when she says, oh, I remembered what this day was. Yeah. And so uh, and it just I love that. And I've got the quote and, and when we get to quotes uh, when they're talking to each other about what what to expect at dinner. I thought that. Well, interesting enough about that date. Everybody's been trying to brainstorm this all over the Internet since yesterday. That date, they thought, oh, maybe that's the date of the snap. And no, that was like August 23rd. And I believe this was the 21st. And then May 21st. I was thinking, oh, is that when Endgame premiered? I don't remember. Mm. And then it, nobody really could get a, a stronghold of what was going on, why that date was so prominent, why they would put a heart on there. So if any mm. of you listeners are out there and you have an idea and you kind of pinpointed it, get a roadmap for us, let us know. I didn't even, I didn't even think to pause and figure out what what date was they were actually looking at. So it was May 21st is what the date was? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, maybe it's a movie premiere or something. I don't know. That's that would be interesting to figure out what that was. Well, my number two will be the dinner when Wanda actually has it all done. You know, the <laughs> Agnes comes over, gives her three sets of uh, <laughs> like uh, courses <laughs> for her to prepare. She's there with all her magic and having a good old time in the kitchen. Wendy Jo Rupp's character, who you know, is the boss's wife, she was great, everybody. She was from that 70s show. She played the mom. So she uh, she's there insisting that she wants to help the, you know, the, I guess, the shutters between the rooms, between the kitchen and the, and yeah. the living room or the dining room were opening. She opened them up and then, you know, and then Vision has to do that whole little distraction by singing yakety yak <laughs> and then yeah you know, and then eventually he picks up a, a ukulele to pretty much <laughs> you know, to distract them and yeah. entertain them in some way i thought that was pretty cool you know uh, it's pretty funny how the agatha oh i keep saying agatha it's uh, agnes is trying to help wanda with it but she rushes you know, mm -hmm. uh, Agnes out. <laughs> like, I got this. She loses the lobsters. The one of the lobsters show up on the front door as <laughs> yeah. a knocker. And that's just a waste of food, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, it just well, it's just that whole scene is is hilarious, and I it, it, that's exactly my number two as well. I, I totally agree that it seems like Agnes was really trying to set her up for failure because she brings in this whole elaborate. She talks to this whole elaborate menu that she says, "Oh, you can just whip it up in a few minutes." And I'm like, "You can't, no, you can't even boil <laughs> water. Like you, those lobsters have to be boiled. They have to be prepared. You're putting them into some sort of." cake she was talking about like a like a crab cake or a lobster cake and, and that was your appetizer and then you know steak diane for your, um, <laughs> for your main course it was just it definitely and especially when she shows up at the front door with the pineapple and she's like you weren't answering the back door you know so i came around to the front and it's obviously she's trying to to push the the envelope there. And I love that, that eventually like the whole thing with the chicken where she tries to cook the chicken and she overcooks it. And when she tries to undercook it, it just becomes this basket of eggs. And then, you know, then she makes breakfast for dinner, which I thought was, was a really clever way of, of, uh, of, you know, fixing the problem. Uh, but they're all like, Ooh, how unique that must be European, you know, because he, he talked about her being from so 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 where's she from? Soko uh, Sokovia. Sokovia. Yeah. Um, and uh, and stuff. So it was really, really funny. I just I thought that 
I'm with you right there that their their comic timing, especially in the second episode with that magic show, is yes. just amazing. You can definitely tell that these two uh, work well together. And, you know, obviously they've been in several of the movies, but just that that thought that they're really uh, anyway, that there's that those two really worked well together. I, I, I think both of them stated in an interview recently that this is the most dialogue that they've ever had to do. And she had to deal with somebody who's like almost like a linguist. Because mm. it's based around that time frame. Interesting. And, and it's all the timing and everything that they have to do with the comedy. So she had to change it. She goes, this is more acting I've ever done in wow. even in the MCU movies. Very so, cool. And then Bettany himself, too, said something. He goes, this is more dialogue than I've actually ever had in most of the Marvel movies. Wow. So we're to my number one. Mm-hmm. You've already uh, mentioned it, but, you know, the scene where the boss is choking, you know, his wife is hysterically laughing, but it's mm -hmm. like a consistent loop. And it's a, like there's a glitch in the system where a glitch in the matrix, you know? Yeah. But but Wanda is aware of this. And then she, you know, seems real at that point when she tells and she has to make something happen because it's the reality. I, I'm thinking this is the reality she's creating for herself. Mm -hmm. to hide from the real world. Maybe it's from her depression of losing vision. And that's why she created this so that it could be a, a memory for her or a world that she could run away to because reality is so disturbing to her, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly my number one as well is just that whole thing with the, with, with the choking and the, the wife just, just saying, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. And her husband is just sitting there choking and it's just, it, it, it takes, you know, we had this whole very comic element and there really wasn't anything kind of underlying dark or, or, you know, mean, you know what the word, what the right word is the unsettling, I think is, that, yeah, that's the word I'm, I'm searching for. It yeah. was a very unsettling scene. The fact that, that, that finally Wanda had to tell vision to do something ab about it. And he, and he did. And then immediately after he gets done saving the, the boss's life, the boss is like, well, look at the time. I think it's time to go. I don't know how much they even actually ate after they said they were how hungry they were. Yeah. And, then they and they just kind of leave and he's like i'm gonna get you that promotion we'll talk about it on monday and which i was just like this is this is crazy what is going it's very on much like a regular sitcom at that time because you never really sat see really seen anybody yeah, sit an down eat. And right eat. right but it just it just becomes unsettling and and then you know the whole thing it it just uh, like i said it takes this twist at the end where you realize that okay there's a whole lot more going on here and i'm really glad they released these two episodes the way they did together because it it would be tough next week if we just had this first episode to try to come back and understand what's going on i'm so. wondering if they did test screening of it and got people's thoughts overviews mm -hmm. because i know certain people got it early to pretty much review right and that way they could give their overall opinion so they probably said hey put out the first two and then go from there and that way because the second one i was far more invested into than the first it seemed uh-huh yeah i could agree with that all right so we should move on to notes i see you've got one uh, yeah, I've just got a couple here, and you've already talked about the the, the yakety yakety yak in the episode. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I laughed both times when when Wanda she kind of messed up that whole trivia about married and single men, and she's like, single men are killing married men at an alarming rate, or something. I can't remember exactly how she said. It. I wish I'd written it down. Yeah, single but, men are dying more often than married men, or something. Right, and that's what. Yeah, the, so the trivia was that single men die twice as faster or whatever yes. as married men and then she twists it to get, to say single men are killing married men uh, or something like that like she says it differently than what it was it she doesn't say it correctly uh, and so it just i laughed both times when she said it wrong i was just like <laughs> and you've got a bunch of notes is there anything yeah, that we yeah, haven't talked I, about well we already went over a couple so i'm gonna go over the ones we didn't well the boss wanted to know their backstory they didn't have anything to prepare. And he keeps mm -hmm. badgering, which leads to the questions of why they came there. You know, why did they come to that town? Mm -hmm. Why did they leave where they were? And we still never got an answer. They kind of walked around that. It's like, how did you get here? And all the questions, like, especially with Agnes about 
in the very beginning, it's like, oh, those are a lot of boxes. I didn't really see the moving co- truck. <laughs> she goes, right. oh, I did it all myself. <laughs> and then the uh, the next one I would have would be the effects of the show and how they made them really realistic. It's filmed black and white, which is not a standard now. So they must have had a digital color grading on it. But yeah, ha- it looked. It looked. The, the TV podcast industries guys mentioned mentioned that that it 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 was definitely the way they it was not filmed as a '50s sitcom. It was definitely filmed to be you know seen on high resolution, mm-hmm. you know HD 4K kind of TVs. Yeah, and it I it had that realistic look. You know how when you get an LG OLED or you get those new OLEDs out and they have that motion mm-hmm. control looks like almost like a uh, soap opera. And usually I turn that off for for clients because they don't they don't like that effect. It makes them sick or something because of the way the uh, the TV just pushes in it, and it does that for older movies and shows. Mm-hmm. But this looked like it was filmed that way because I have that stuff turned off on mine. But it was just it was so the the clarity in it mm-hmm. and the way they really moved good. was really good. Yeah, and then of course that ending with all the machinery was interesting. You know, we see somebody at the very end, at the tail end of the credits, and someone was at that machine, and they were basically looking at it almost like as if it was a TV Mm -hmm. show. And I'm curious, who was that? And it looked to me like a a woman. And there was a uh, podcast roadcaster there. And that's something that used in podcasting. And then we see a lot of other modern recording devices and and a computer. And there was a symbol of sword. So, and that popped up a couple of times. So the symbol of sword is like a, like a circle with the sword on it, mm, and okay. with some, I believe, some feathers. So that's the next step of shield because we don't have shield anymore. Right. And the comic sword means sentient world observation response division but apparently in the mcu it is referred as the sentient weapon observation response division oh okay so that means if there's a threat and i'm thinking maybe they see wanda as a threat and she was put into a hospital so she created this world yeah, I think it's it's going to be interesting to to see going forward how this uh, how this mystery plays out and, and over the nine episodes that we get. Yeah, I'm hoping we get a little bit more reality come into it, you know. And we'll move on to quotes. So you got one? Um, yeah, I just uh, like when they're talking about the fact that that uh, Vision doesn't eat. Uh, she opens <laughs> up the refrigerator and she's like, "Well, that explains the empty refrigerator." <laughs> and it's got that whole laugh track and you know she's they're doing those one liners like a like a sitcom is really great. Yeah. My first one would be from Norm and I think I mentioned it already cuz Norm says to Vision at work going you're like a walking computer. What? I most certainly am not. I'm a regular carbon based employee made entirely of organic matter. Much like yourself, Norm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was great. Uh, my last one is just when they're when they're having that phone conversation and they're talking about what their what the ultimate goal of this this night is. And Vision, uh, Wanda said, or v- Vision says the best course of action is to impress the wife, and then Wanda says, and I think the best course of action is to impress the husband. So I thought that was really that they just didn't realize they were talking about two different things. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was that confusion. Darn, uh, because it was on the phone. Yeah. 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 So move on to episode two. Yeah, I have the last quote. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, it would be Vision after the he walks in and she has the dishes flying. Mm. And he goes, my wife, and it breaks, uh, my wife and her flying saucers. And Wanda goes, my husband and his his indestructible head. Aren't we a fine pair? (laughs) (laughs) It was great. Um, so on to episode two. Again, we, we have no titles known yet, but the synopsis we have is in an effort to fit in, Wanda and Vision perform a magic act in their community talent show. Ladies and gentlemen, for my final trick, I bring you the cabinet of mysteries. <laughs> yes, darling, that's your cue. Did you say cabinet of mysteries? I said the cabinet of of mysteries. Oh, that's my cue. Oh. Holy Toledo, darling. Do all the other acts in the talent show have such elaborate props? Are you 
you kidding? Fred and Linda are building a moat in a fully functioning portcullis and no one even knows why. Let's keep going. Oh, yes, yes, where was I? Um, watch closely as I illusion master of iniquity. Hmm. And it's pretty cool that they're pretty much straight one sentence vague kind mm -hmm. of synopsis. Yeah, that's really good. So for general thoughts on this episode, well, this episode to me was so entertaining to me. I, I, I out of the two, I love this the best. The comedy and the characters all around, uh, how Wanda reacts to the ladies of the community, and then how Vision struggles to fit in with his coworkers. To the end of the episode, th this is it's like a consistent struggle. The magic magic routine was really fun to watch, but you know how they gummed it all up. <laughs> Not to put you know a pun on it, but the underlying uh, underlying mystery is always where within the episode when once we see the show changes from. 60s black and white to color tv yeah and yeah, I, go ahead no i was thinking Finish. in the in the very beginning in the first episode we see some easter eggs of like there's an ad on the paper for you know expand your world and get a color tv mm. so eventually this was gonna happen because they're gonna break away because apparently they're going through multiple styles of tv over the course of decades right yeah if you watch the trailer the, the the one of the trailers that went out was really good that it showed how they're how they're going to be basically sampling different sitcom type environments is what it looked like mm. um so it was it's 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 really be fun to see how they do that and you know i loved i love the the beginning credits that they had here like you talked about it's almost shot for shot just like the bewitched opening credits and i kind of hope they don't said they don't have the same thing every week i hope they do something different each week to like maybe one week it'll be like a love american style or a brady bunch kind of credits or you know what i'm saying like they'll, they'll pick a different sitcom that they want to emulate and they'll use that sitcom's opening credits until we get up to whatever you know now or something yeah like the 2000s or something yeah yeah so we'll move on to top fives and oh wow <laughs> Would you look at that? That really gummed up my works, didn't it? Mm. <laughs> I'm not as funny without it, am I? Well, you're back to yourself, and that's all I care about. Now let's get out of here before Dottie and the planning committee string us up for ruining the show. You two, stop right there. What's your number five? Absolutely, I, I had the same thing I just I just talked about. Really, was just that opening credits of the the sitcom that it's going to be interesting, and I hope they kind of do a different version uh, each each week. I would love to see that. I don't want to see the same. The I don't really want to see the same thing every week. I'd rather see a little bit something different. Hmm. Well, I'm loving the laugh track. You know, the first scene when Wanda changes the bed from a twin to a queen once once they are combined. Mm -hmm. It basically goes against the times for the 60s, but comes into play later on when they switch from the 60s to the 70s, if you think about it. The Brady Bunch was the first show to have a queen bed with a man and a woman in it at the same time. That was never allowed. I Love Lucy, you would always see two, mm -hmm. you know, two single beds in one room. Yeah, even even Happy Days, if I remember correctly, which was supposed to emulate a 50s family, they they slept in separate beds, I believe. All in the family, I think they slept in separate beds, even though that was a more modern sitcom. But uh, but yeah, you're right. I, I didn't think about that until I saw that in your notes, that uh, it was not a normal thing to see. Like, Leave it to Beaver, I think they slept in separate beds. Yep. And so Yeah, and plus the, the intro animation video to the show was very much like Bewitched, like I mentioned before. I was hoping that they would have had that for the first episode. But I'm thinking they were moving more towards like Leave It a Beaver or something back then. Yeah, and they gave us that really cool opening song that basically set the whole thing up for us in that first episode, which I thought was cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So my number four. Yes. 
is the the way they used color throughout the episode kind of as as like you said kind of foreshadowing the total switch to color at the end wanda finds that yeah you know, she finds that that helicopter with and you just talked about it's the sword logo is on the the helicopter the colors of the helicopter are red and yellow just like iron man's colors yep. so i thought that was that was really cool we see the blood when dotty cuts herself and she says you know how does a a, a woman get a blood stain out of a white white linens by herself and then she just walks away i thought that was that was really interesting and then of course at the end we get the full color as it crosses into either the 60s or the 70s i'm not sure um when color was was first brought in uh but we get that full color uh and we get wanda pregnant so Mm. that's that was something that wasn't you didn't see a lot of on tv either uh until the 60s and the 70s was pregnant was women pregnant yeah they wouldn't allow that basically it was like an illusion she would they would say, oh, we're expecting. And then mm-hmm. two episodes later, they have the kid. They have a baby. Yeah. Yeah. My number four would be the constant reminder of things that are real. When Wanda sees the colored kids. Yeah. That, that little helicopter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then you mentioned it, the sword symbol. And, you know, I already mentioned what sword was within the comics and what it is in reference to the MCU. So something is going on that we just don't know until the end of the show, I'm assuming. I hope we get a little bit more as uh, episodes go by, though. Yeah, so uh, my number three, I think we have the same number three, is is this Dottie, the character of Dottie, paid, yes. played by Emma Caulfield uh, Ford. I did not recognize her. I can't believe I didn't recognize her from Buffy uh, right away. It, it had to be the black and white messing with my head. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I hope she comes back. I hope she becomes like a recurring character throughout all the different sitcoms because I really liked uh, her, her smugness. And then she almost, there's that moment when the radio starts playing, Help Me Wanda, mm-hmm. and she has this very like desperate look to, where she almost breaks character and it almost made me wonder if there's more than just Wanda trapped in this alternate reality because you know Dottie says well who are you who are you and then when Wanda when Wanda talks about the blood it kind of snaps her back into character you know yes. and and so then she goes off and, and so I, I, I really like this character, but I hope we get more of these instances where we see people break character and and find out that, okay, there's something more going on here than just in Wanda's head, I think. There was somebody at that party, too, um, the, the black lady that was there, mm-hmm. and I, she's listed in credits as being Monica Rambeau. Oh, interesting. So, listeners, if you're not- She called herself Geraldine. She called herself Geraldine. That's what I was I was looking for the name. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think in Wanda's world she is this. And I think we're going to see because some some of the trailers that we got we saw where Geraldine, as she is, is pulled into that world. Right. And and they list her as Monica Rambeau, and Monica Rambeau was the later version of Captain Marvel. Right. Right. That was the that was the the uh, in in the movie Captain Marvel. That was the family that she was. Yes. That was her. Monica uh, was the daughter of yeah. her best friend. Right. Right. So, but yeah, it that's it's pretty cool that you know. Hopefully, we'll get more information regarding that. And just like you, I I just love the fact that we got Emma Caulfield in it, and I do want to see her in more. Yeah. Yeah. I just love you know her comedic timing is great. And I left for the fact that she is the one woman to impress in the community. She's always that <laughs> hoity-toity kind of woman that uh, has a high opinion about herself. And I just love how she makes Wanda clean up everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love – and just like you know, we get, a, we get a kind of impression of what people think of her because like when Wanda claps and nobody else does, uh, Geraldine says, the only reason I didn't clap is because I'm afraid to move. Because of, of what Dottie will say or do, you know, mm. so. So number two? Uh, my number two was all those animations we got of Vision's insides with the gum and, and, the, and then and there at the magic show. It was just, and the, the magic show itself was just hilarious. But I just, that, that animation I thought was really, really cool. And we already mm. talked about that comic timing between, uh, between 
Paul Bettany and Liz Olson that it's just really great when you know when Vision comes out of the curtain though uh, and he makes his kind of announcement I I got a bit of the bard from Knight's Tale the in if you close your eyes as he's coming out of that curtain he announces himself he sounds just like the bard uh, from the Knight's Tale that was of course was the same actor yeah so well that was really cool I thought her outfit seemed a little bit risque the first time I watched it yeah for, for the 50s show yeah but definitely then when I looked at it again I was kind of like well you know she's got stockings on she's got nylons it co- it does cover up everything so maybe but it still seemed a little bit uh, for the time mm. and that card trick that he did when he's <laughs> flying, sure flying. Sure <laughs> yeah, yeah and then he finally gets to the last card and the guy's like yeah the trick worked you did it right i just i <laughs> laughed every time i watched it that well it's funny uh my number two would be vision's eagerness to fit in with his workmates yeah, he states that he doesn't eat. He had him, oh, I don't eat in between meals. Yeah. <laughs> and then they hand him the gum. He doesn't even know how to chew. And then, and the funny thing is, is that meeting, if you look at it, it's a way, it, it's Vision just trying to be Vision because he talks about public safety and like caring mm-hmm. for the community and what what he thought it was like a whole community watch party kind of gathering or community and it 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 shows it's like he's trying to be the protector like he is in the real world so he chews the gum the gum mucks up and changes the magic show a bit you know (laughs) he he plays out being drunk and i just love the cartoon visualization just like you said (laughs) within the episode with uh, how it gums up his works yeah (laughs) then wanda has to make up for vision's drunkenness (laughs) and they both come out through it but I have more um, thoughts in, uh, in my notes about the uh, the magic show, too. So when we get to there, I'll bring a little bit more information. Okay. Um, my, my last my last uh, number one, or before we get into notes, is just the, the second episode was really a lot better of, even though I didn't know, I don't know the comics very well, I don't know what the deal is with S.W.O.R.D., I don't know any of that stuff. It didn't mm. really hurt me in this second episode because I, I've established... I have a working knowledge of the MCU, so I know who these characters are. And so seeing them together, it gives me that that hope that uh, that things are going to progress. And just that whole thing at the end when the beekeeper guy comes out, I don't know anything about sword. I don't know anything about, about uh, what those logos or was that was on his jumpsuit. That was a little different, but it, it doesn't, it didn't, it didn't take away from the story for me. So as much as I said, it, the first episode, you had to know something about it. I think once we get established into this 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 show, I think we're really going to uh, separate out from where what's going on in the comics as far as for the MCU. That we don't we don't necessarily have to know what's going on in the comics to to be able to follow this show. Yeah, it could be just accepted as it is, but it mm-hmm. does help to watch the Infinity War and Endgame to right. get an idea of what's going on. And my number one would be the ending scene with the colorization with someone calling to her on the radio. Wanda, who is doing this to you? Wanda, it it, it seems like she's being monitored. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a monitor on her. Her powers may be out of whack and she is in this kind of state. It makes me think more of Agatha and her control to some Agnes. degree. Oh, Agnes, uh, yeah. <laughs> which we'll get into now. Uh, in in the, the comics, Agatha Harkness actually trained Wanda to be a witch and to uh. use her abilities, her mutant abilities. So I, I keep referring to her as Agatha Harkness. So, But she's a huge witch within the Marvel Universe. So a few listeners don't know or are aware of that. They do have a little bit of uh, information online about that. But... The guy who's like talking over the radio. I, at first, I sent this into podcast uh, TV podcast industries, and I thought it was Clint Barton because it's always usually Clint that comes to Wanda's aid. But somebody I heard recently on something else, they were stating that it was um, oh, I think it's Jimmy Chu who played the uh, Asian FBI guy that went for an Ant Man. The second Ant Man movie, uh, oh, okay. Ant Man and the Wasp. Yeah, where I he was in House Arrest. Mm-hmm. So I, they were saying that was his voice, and I'm like, hmm, I'm curious though. I would love to see if they if they could get a visual of like who's on the opposite and 
side well, who's think, in the real world, you know? Yeah, and I think that's part of the, the mystery that's going to get going to get played out. And just, just like, you know, it, and this is kind of going into my notes because it plays into that final scene that you were just talking about is, you know, when they go out on the street and they see that beekeeper guy come out of the manhole, Wanda says no. And then this whole rewind thing happens and we go back inside the house. Mm-hmm. And and that's where the show ends with them in in the house revealing her pregnancy. So mm-hmm. I, I was a little confused by that at the same time as as uh, you know. So I think it's one of those things that that they're going to have to. Yeah, they're just going to explain it. As it's the show it's goes literally and, it, from what I got out of that scene with him coming out of the manhole cover with the bees around him. He had the sword symbol on him. Mm-hmm. That to me, because originally in one of the comic story arcs was is that Mephisto was the reason why Wanda was pregnant because he manipulated her to think that she was pregnant and she made it reality right and he was going to utilize those twins spoiler but as a uh, a way to uh, get a better hold on her and use it use her to what he needs to be done and there was some sort of symbolism of somebody coming out of the manhole, like Mephisto coming out from the hmm. deep dark trenches of hell or something. And then he, uh, and then it was always clouded around with bees, hmm. but I don't think that's this at all from what people are trying to tell me. But I do believe that reality was starting to clock in and she had a rewind to reset that scene to get where she needed to. And that's when it activated the whole colorization. So it yeah. went into that next decade, I guess. Right. Right. It's going to be interesting to see. I, it's, it's, it's sad that we have to wait a week and we're <laughs> only going to get one. We're only going to get one episode. So. Yep. Well, uh, I just like that the vision was using his powers within the magic act, even though he was way off. <laughs> I, I loved how Wanda had to, had to, to, to switch it around and make it look like he wasn't using his powers. Yes. You know, like, and so she had to use, yeah, <laughs> so she had to use her powers to make it look like he wasn't using his powers. Yeah. Yeah. That was my grandmother's piano. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oops. You weren't supposed to see that, you know, yeah. that. Yeah. Could, so uh, the all for the children words keep coming in. If you think about it, that uh, makes me think after two watchings, that was due to the fact that Wanda wanted children mm-hmm. or is somebody subliminally putting that because you see that in the newspaper as well or the magazine, something about having children and mm-hmm. everybody. And throughout this episode, they were, it's like, it's all for the children. They were chanted at the very end. Yeah. So I think it was kind of, I maybe I'm thinking Agnes being involved in this world that she's in, but influencing and then having that. And then on top of that, you have the real world trying to creep in. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm like, I'm like, it's got me thinking like crazy when I first started watching these two. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was my only other note was the whole for the children thing. If it was, if it was a foreshadowing of the end of the, the episode showing, uh, her being pregnant. So, yeah. Uh, but you've got some other notes here? Yeah, I'll just go on. We already mentioned a bunch of them. The uh, symbol on the cabinet that Wanda and Vision use uh, in their magic act looks a lot like the Mind Stone. Mm. You know? Yeah. That was on Vision's head. And it's funny, too, because he still has that Mind Stone on his head when he's in Vision mode, if you, if you think about it. Mm-hmm. It's not... We don't have color yet, but we're going to, and right. you're going we'll to see the yellow. Pay attention. Yeah, pay attention to see if it's there or not. Um, there are a lot of symbols in the animation in the very beginning, how they intro the, the, the episode, and it reveals a lot of Easter eggs from the comics. So I started picking them out, and I had to slow it down to figure it out. So there's a, pis- uh, a poster for Bova Milk, and in the comics, there is a strange character called Bova. And that is a mm. cow midwife that delivered Wanda and Pietro. Mm. And the other one, uh, another one would be, there is another poster that had Wonder Oats. And that's a reference to Wonder Man, which Vision's mind was created from Wonder Man's brainwaves in the comic books as well. Oh, interesting. And another poster was Auntie A's Kitty Litter. This would be in reference to Agatha Harkness within the comic. And there is a cat in the poster. And as well as the reference to Agatha's shape-changing cat, you know? Hmm. So. 
you know, and I already mentioned that how Agatha, you know, trained Wanda in the comics, mm-hmm. how to use her, uh, or trained her how to be a witch and use her mutant abilities. So, and in the, in the show, they use a, the word illusion a lot. And I think this is a metaphor of how Wanda is using illusion to hide what she is doing in the real world or to the real world. Right. So th- that's all I got. <laughs> okay. uh, so we had a couple of quotes. Do you want to go ahead and start? Sure. First one but it would be from Wanda saying, are you using your night vision vision? When the vision <laughs> looks outside. <laughs> that was great. Uh, and I loved when they were talking about the, the magic show. And she says, well, that's the whole point. That's the whole point. In a real magic act, everything is fake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because, yeah, because she was because they were talking the cabinet trap door. And, yep. Mm-hmm. And then Geraldine at the very end shows up. <laughs> yeah. But she had to use her power to put Geraldine in there. Mm-hmm. It's just funny. Uh, the last one I have would be from Vision, of course, you know, the typical, that really gummed up the works, didn't it? Ha, 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 <laughs> laugh track. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the last one I had was uh, when Vision, when he starts the magic act, he says the word flourish. And and Wanda goes, you just do it. You don't say it, honey. And and then if you notice throughout the magic act, he does it a few times. He goes, flourish. You know, <laughs> Instead of doing it, he just says it. So I thought that was funny. Cool. So on to podcast recommendations. So what do you have, Steve? Uh, all I've got really is is we've already talked a little bit about it is TV podcast industries because they are covering uh, WandaVision as well. Derek and the guys, they do a, they do a great job. Uh, I think they might get, like you were talking about, they might get screeners. They might get these episodes a little bit early. So they're able to put their podcast out like right away. Mm. Uh, but they wait until the episode actually airs before they put their podcast out they don't they don't spoil for anybody uh until after the episode is actually aired on uh on disney plus but i encourage our listeners to to check them out tv podcast industries yeah and you if you listen i sent in my voicemail to them yesterday yeah i sent one in in derek message he did get both of ours so we should be in there when they do their their feedback i think he said uh uh tomorrow or i can't remember what he said they're going to do their feedback uh they're do their episode two well they've done their episode two recording and they're going to put that feedback in there i think so yeah i it's it's kind of strange because sometimes they'll actually have a whole podcast based on feedback alone yeah they get a lot of feedback yeah they've been around a lot longer (laughs) yeah a lot longer than us (laughs) (laughs) so for me podcast recommendations all i would recommend run for your lives with pake and daphne on the pirate core entertainment network they have a new episode out about the movie Attack the Block. And I, I love this movie. It was a British movie about aliens coming down on the east end of London and a bunch of unruly kids helping the community with the alien invasion. I believe Jodie Whittaker is in it. I might be yeah. wrong. Yep. Jodie Whittaker and John Boyega. Yep. Uh, uh, John Boyega. And, and heavy, heavy East London accent, too. Yes. And then we got Nick Frost, too. So, mm-hmm. and then next up would be Rima and Ben on Strange Indeed on the Podcastica Network with the coverage of The Stand on the CBS All Access. So, I recommend you check them out. Ben is currently keeping Pake's seat warm. Apparently, <laughs> I, I think Pake is. I think Pake is sitting in on this episode. This week's oh, episode. So, yeah, it's going to be a trifecta. So you'll have th- Pake, Ben, and Rima soon. Yeah, I think. I think it, episode five he was supposed to be on. So. And Jason, Jason, Rima, and Richard on House Podcastica on the Podcastica Network, and they're covering Cobra Kai Season 3, and it's so entertaining. And Steve, you were on there. I was. I was on uh, House Podcastica for last week's episode, and I believe they have been on uh, for this week's episode. So it was a whole lot of fun. Uh, and I actually recorded a, a, a feedback, which we played as well on there. So uh, if you guys are listening to House Podcastica, last week's episode, you'll hear my voice twice uh, or <laughs> a lot of times, actually. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun working with those guys, and uh, I can't wait. They're talking about uh, maybe having me back in the next season or something. So, Oh, cool. Yeah. So – 
to submit your feedback. Of course, we love feedback. We would love to hear from our, our wonderful listeners. You can hear us on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcast, or wherever you, uh, whatever podcast player of choice you use. If there's an opportunity to give us a review, give us a review on there and let us know how we're doing, good or bad, hopefully good. Uh, you can check out our website at panels to pixels podcast.com. Uh, we, again, we love feedback. And one of the easiest ways that you can send us feedback is on our Facebook uh, page, which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels, or you can send us an email, record your voice, send us an email, send it to panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one at gmail.com. The two is spelled out T O right there in the middle and the number one. We're also on YouTube. You just search for Panels to Pixels podcast. Give us a thumbs up and you can subscribe to us. Uh, next week, of course, we will have WandaVision episode three. Uh, if you want to send us something for episode one and two, please do. And we will play that uh, next week as well. In about two weeks, two or three weeks, I'm, I've got to look up the dates. When, whenever Snowpiercer starts, yeah. we'll, be, we'll be having dual episodes where we'll talk about the WandaVision episode and Snowpiercer episode, hopefully yep. in the same podcast. Hopefully. We'll see <laughs> what we can do. If it, if, it, if, it, if it seems too too tough, we may have to – I don't know. We'll, we we'll might figure split it, out. it up to yeah. individuals per week, and that would be fine. Yeah. We might even have people step in to help co-host or whatnot. Sure. not sure yet. <laughs> yeah. We've got some Snowpiercer fans out there, so – so where else can listener hear, uh, listeners hear us? Well, I could be found right here on the Panels to Pixels podcast, as well as sending out audio feedback to other podcasts that I love that my friends do. So you can also hear me on another podcast called Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, and that's on the PowerCore Entertainment Network. And if you're not aware of it, the podcast is about all those action adventure films, pure action films, suspense and thrilling films. Basically anything to get your adrenaline going while watching these films. So Panels to Pixels will remain on the Next Level Podcast Network. Stay tuned here and we'll keep you up to date or just check out Pirate Core Entertainment's website and follow us there. And for me, you can always hear me right here on Panels to Pixels. I, uh, I and Mark have been doing this now for uh, – this is our 123rd episode. Yep. That's, that's crazy. Like uh, we've been doing this for almost three years. Oh, we've or been doing I, it I think three, it's three years. Year, three years. It's, <laughs> it's as of as of this. Uh, yeah, three years as of this month. So I think it was uh, January 2017, right after or 20 uh, 28. Man, it, right after the Punisher came out because that was the first show we covered was Punisher season one. Yeah, I started recording December 28th. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's three years. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. Yeah. So you can hear me here. And, and I do send, as Mark mentioned, I've, I've guested on various podcasts, uh, which I love doing. And I send in voicemails to various podcasts. So uh, you, you can hear my voice if you're listening around Podcastica, Next Level Podcast Network, and Adrenaline Cinema as well. Or yeah. Pirate Core Entertainment Network yeah. as well. Yeah, as well. So, well, that's our show. And I just want to thank everyone for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels, and we'll see you on the next panel. Talk to you guys later. Good night, everybody.